Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a genus spotlight and the genus is Cryptocarines. A very interesting plant, very popular plant in the aquarium hobby, which is naturally found, distributed uh, throughout Southeast Asia, including India and New Guinea. Um, the type of river habitat or stream and river habitat that they're found in are within lowland forested areas. The, the rivers can uh, vary in both width and depth, anywhere from a meter or so to several meters easily deep. And the flow rates can vary as well, anywhere from a slower flow to a, a faster, stronger current, uh, which has resulted in, uh, in a divergent group of species as well. Very interesting. And uh, they are subject to seasonal water levels as well, resulting in some of the plants uh, being found on, on uh, river banks as well during the dry season. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the lighting, uh, variety of species, substrate, color, and so forth about cryptocarines, kind of like we do about fish. At the current time, there are 69 species of cryptocarines, uh, names like... Um, Bichetti, Willis, Willisi, uh, Undulata, Parva, those are some of the names of cryptocarines we commonly hear. Um, they are a, kind of a diverse group of plants, as we had mentioned in the beginning. Um, they are plants that are typically known to be a little bit uh, slower growing, in fact. Uh, they're not a rapidly spreading plant. They, they <clears throat> spread and multiply using runners. So the... Um, uh, you need to keep that in mind when providing them, when planting them initially. You want to plant them with some room around them so that the plant will have uh, area to spread its runners. The tank size is really uh, less of a uh, concern. They do well in smaller tanks, um, uh, all the way up to longer, larger aquariums as well. Uh, the smaller species are more suited, of course, to being maintained as a, a foreground plant. Uh, they adapt really well to over uh, plants that grow over the surface and reduce light levels, given their uh, very good ability to tolerate uh, mid to lower light, uh, um, you know, lighting conditions. Uh, the type of substrate uh, you want for these heavily rooted uh, plants uh, are re is really a sand substrate or a typical compressed soil a volcanic soil type substrate made specifically for aquatic plants. They do far better in that than they do uh, other types of uh, substrates. They are not a plant that you can grow on solid surfaces like rocks or wood, for example, uh, like uh, Nubius or other plants with a rhizome. Uh, you, you would not be able to do that with cryptocarines. Um, the plant color range is really quite substantial with them. Uh, you get anything from a bright green coloration all the way to browns and, or, or really reddish browns as well. So there's a nice variety of different colors. Uh, and of course, there's different types of leaf shapes as well amongst the variety of species of cryptocarines. So there's a lot to choose from when it comes to keeping this kind of plant for sure. Now we're going to talk about water conditions that are recommended for cryptocarines. Uh, consistency is really key. You want to maintain stable water parameters. You don't want to have accumulations of uh, nitrate or phosphate taking place. So regular small water changes, small percentage water changes are really best. Uh, temperature uh, range would be somewhere between 73 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which translates to about 23 to 30, 30 degrees Celsius as a temperature range. Uh, pH level, ideally between 6 and 8, although that's, that's a very wide range. Most species like acidic values, so we recommend that you research a bit and, and really determine what is the best range for the particular species you're going to keep. Typically between six and seven is, is, is a better uh, range to consider. Uh, and of course, degrees of hardness, uh, anywhere between four and 18 degrees of hardness uh, is acceptable for most cryptocarines. Obviously the acidic loving species are going to typically do better in values that are more like four to 10 or four to eight uh, degrees of hardness. Now, when it comes to feeding your cryptocarines, as we mentioned before, it's a heavily rooted plant. So 
Uh, nutrients that are delivered via root tabs are really the best way to fertilize cryptocurrenes in general. Um, is CO2 necessary? Not for most species, but for installations, for example, where you have a lot of carpeted, uh, like parva, for example, in an aquascape tank with bright lighting, then CO2 really is important. You're going to be pushing the plant to grow with uh, greater light levels. So giving it CO2 uh, becomes much more beneficial. But in lower energy setups, it's not really necessary for, for the majority of, of cryptocurrenes, in fact. Um, now, when it comes to liquid fertilizers, less important than root tabs, but still beneficial. Uh, the way we recommend you dose with uh, a liquid fertilizer for cryptocurrenes is take the weekly dose and divide it by, uh, by half and dose and uh, half and then dose twice a week as opposed to once a week, for example. So smaller amounts, if you want to split it more, even better. Uh, maintaining a lower value but having its presence there all the time is a better uh, way to deliver nutrients via the water column to cryptocurrenes. So in summary, cryptocurrenes obviously um, with our interest in aquascaping is uh, one of our favorite plants uh, given the wide variety of species, the different leaf shapes, colors, uh, there's so much to choose from when it comes to this genus of plants uh, that it makes it like infinitely interesting uh, as, as a plant uh, group to choose from. Uh, they are great plants for both the be beginner and the experienced aquascaper alike. And so for that reason, definitely one of our preferred uh, plants for sure. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please share your comments with us. Until the next time.